Class Retailing, the parent company of Uniqlo, aspires to be the world's largest clothing company by 2020. Now, conquering the US market is going to be absolutely crucial for achieving this ambitious goal. Not only is this country the world's largest apparel market, but according to Euromonitor research, it was the fifth largest growth market in actual terms over the 2006 to 2011 period, despite being at the epicenter of the financial crisis. Uniqlo has a sound distribution strategy in place for tackling the US market, spearheaded by launching glamorous flagship stores in prominent locations like New York's Fifth Avenue. This stems from the logic that it needs to enter the market big in order to really establish itself as a household name. I believe the company understands that eventually it's going to have to gain traction with the vast number of American consumers who live outside these big metropolitan cities. Internet retailing is certainly going to contribute to stronger growth in the US, so it was a wise move for Uniqlo to launch its US e-commerce site in October 2012. This is going to allow it to gauge where consumer demand for its products is highest to launch subsequent retail stores. It also places it a step ahead of competitor H&M, which delayed its US e-commerce site for the second time now. Uniqlo expects about 20% of its US sales to come from the internet channel by 2020. Although this is an ambitious target, it's certainly achievable, given that according to our research, around 7% of all apparel value sales in the US came from the online channel in 2011, and this is only going to escalate going forward. Uniqlo's product offering is certainly going to be one of its key strengths in the US. Its focus on multicolored basics allows it to generate significant cost synergies, which keeps its pricing really competitive. At the same time, its focus on technologically advanced fabrics sets it apart from fast fashion rivals H&M and Zara. However, the brand is yet to recreate the success of its highly popular heat tech range, which was first introduced in Japan in 2003. Because Uniqlo's product offering is so basic, constant innovation is going to be crucial in the US to keep consumers engaged after the brand's initial novelty factor wears off. Uniqlo also needs to ensure that it has a clearly defined target market group in the US. The brand's tagline is made for all, which brings up the question whether the brand can actually be all things to all people, um, especially in the US, where the market is much more heterogeneous than in domestic Japan. Uniqlo's recent marketing activity suggests it's targeting a young, tech-savvy demographic in the US. This certainly seems to be a track that many other apparel brands are taking, given that young adults and teenagers have such a high propensity to spend on apparel. In fact, Uniqlo's biggest competitor in the States, Gap, saw a recent turnaround in sales after rejuvenating its brand to appeal more to these millennial consumers. Whilst the US is a very fragmented market, when it comes to fashion, consumers are always hungry for novelty. This presents significant opportunities for international retailers like fast retailing. However, sustained success in the market is going to come from really appealing to the masses and constantly bringing something new and exciting to the table.